Hello guys, this is IDQ and in this video I want to talk about Monkey King. I feel like this hero is super super underrated right now, to be honest. One of the most underrated heroes of the patch. Obviously everyone know how, knows how to play Monkey King safely, right? You just go there and right click people with Robo Venom and obviously win the lane against melee heroes. But I want to talk about the hero in the mid lane. I feel like this is the part of the hero that sort of gets forgotten to be honest it used to be a really good mid lane hero right since you could just trade with the people infinitely because of jingo mastery but right now you can't do it anymore to be honest it feels very very hard if you like this type of content go to gamersclass.com for just 9.99 a month watch master classes with pro players join exclusive live sessions and get 24 7 access to coaches and other high mmr players get full control of your rank games and start owning with our supreme dota 2 membership so the hero in this patch got a bit of a nerf, right? So or so it is percepted. First of all, the uh, acronym shard, I mean the acronym scepter got changed. This is the main, uh, the main idea that you can't really get rush with acronym scepter anymore because the clones don't hit uh, ages. I mean don't hit the roshan, and also they die whenever you die, right? So it's a bit of a nerf. However, ultimate got cooldown reduced by 10 seconds per level. Which is obviously really good. Jigo Master didn't get changed. The Q got uh, stun duration increased at first level, second and third, you know, until the max. Cooldown is better at the uh, less level and, you know, penultimate level by two seconds. Cast range got reduced, however. So basically, this spell got better. It's just the cast range that got um, reduced, which isn't really that important. Since you can position yourself with three tens very well anywhere, right? Through the team fight. Um, the three dance also got changed, right? Night vision got increased by 200, which is a pretty significant change. It's plus uh, 50%. Shard cooldown is also good, and then the primal spring got reduced by uh, 900, you know. But it's really, really good right now. To be fair, it is because the bottle, exactly what I'm showing right now, right? It's super, super hard to trade with other people right i couldn't really build jingo stacks against the time because he has a toss he has avalanche i mean you know potentially i could if i buy boots and um boots and Dorbo venom but exactly because of that he can just get every rune right since there are two runes right now he can get one on top bottom and then get the bounty rune right here so it's very very hard to uh out harass people right now because of the bottle everyone has like 20 charges so what you can do is exactly what i'm doing right now just buy bottle yourself and then max three dance and just farm jungle uh this camp is super super close to you and this one is another important change right in the 7.29 i believe the map got changed so this is where the camp used to be right so every hero could just walk from the mid lane to this camp but now it's right here so it's very very hard for people to go and farm it right however for monkey king you can just jump to this tree and then farm this very very easily same as this one so you basically don't have to waste seconds walking and stuff you can just jump from here to here you're instantly here other heroes have to like lose like five seconds by walking from here to here and also there is no uh there is no downside to doing this buying bottle and farming more with three dance a lot more obviously because you have a lot of bottle charges, exactly like your enemy, right? So, as you can see, I'm highest nether, right? 200 already. I'm starting to gain advantage over the opponents. My opponent mid lane, obviously. And you're not missing any less it's mid. As you can see, I can just jump, jump on the creeps from the wave very easily. And then just go back to jungle. Just like this. And you're not missing any less hits, right? You just get them. Because at level 5... Um, Four minutes in, you get a lot of uh, you get a lot of damage from this. It's 280 damage, so you're not missing any assets. Also, did some stacks here, so you can build up an advantage, right? And there are two options that you can uh, choose afterwards, right? You can either go with your team. I can buy boots right now and go try to gank. Even even with three levels of this, it slows for 60%, and I have boots, and you know. Uh, 60% of, of 300 something is like 150 movements with max for the enemies. So I can still hit them a lot, especially with another disable from my team. Right, if I would buy Orpo Venom here. But it still feels really hard, right? Because the opponent middle can gank also. He can just, if I go top, he can tip it up and help his team. 
so my hero doesn't do that much comparatively to him also all the three opponents at a great lane right as you can see right here they're uh the opponent scores all three of them had a great lane and pa can't really do anything right again just she can just dagger the people so it doesn't really matter if i come bottom you can just ja dagger oracle just this which is you know not that great to be honest i can't really gank top because of the uh, gas from draw and also snowball can just save her right pull her away somewhere so it's really really hard to do anything like that so instead of just try to farm as much as possible and it's very very easy to do it with uh primal spring one thing that you can do that i recommend is buying uh, infused raindrops just for the mana region even the mana region is worth the spell you know almost one mana region per second so it's really really important you have like every rune that you you can get every single rune with monkey king because you have uh, three dens so you're not missing any mana however you would still you know need this if you spam it every single second you know, uh, the max level is 13 second cooldown, so you just want to buy it. So as you can see, I'm the highest by 500, something like that. And my uh, my off lane is like a thousand gold behind, even more, 1100, 1200 gold. Safe lane is not going well also, like 500 gold behind on PA. And as I said, I can't really help this guy. He has ring of hell like if i go here nothing's gonna happen this guy has stampede he has vanguard like he's, he's 1700 hp like seven minutes in or something i can't really do anything right here right so it's not not possible to gang draw can also just go here and farm the ancients and i won't be able to reach her right here i, I can't go there without being spotted by this word or you know she could work uphill here so i can't really go there alone so i just Get your farm, you know, get your farm as much as possible. I'm highest level in the game, I believe, right? I have uh, people muted because else they would uh, spam chat, you know. Like, ha ha ha, voice lines and stuff like that. So it's kind of annoying when I'm uh, recording and stuff. DMC, I just try to gank the draw, obviously, but uh, she TP'd me, right? I was going towards top and she TP'd me. I noticed she tip it, then I turn and go towards her. Obviously, I still want to run a draw, especially it's just because Tiny was was the way, right? She was bottom, and I saw that he was going bottom with a TP because he used this. I guess it wasn't shown right here, but uh, yeah, I just remember. As you can see, I'm I'm still ahead, right? I'm ahead of everyone. I'm doing really well. If my team is come to me, I can still fight, right? Obviously, it's super super easy to fight, even like this. It's a kind of decent play you know i kill the enemy safe lane that everyone's just going on me wasting a lot of time i die here obviously but yeah it's pretty close to be honest could have lived there maybe most likely not because of the smp the super super annoying so this guy's highest network like 1500 over my last pick uh pa i was first pick monkey because i just wanted to uh do this video basically it's else i didn't really have the chance to just pick it you know just like that that it would be extremely good or something now this point of the game you still want to continue farming because you're even if you're ahead yeah you can run at the enemies but i would still choose to get one item right first for example maestrom and then try to fight with your ult or something like that because you're pretty weak just uh just like this obviously especially when the opponents are winning by a lot right as you can see by the network he is not doing anything. This guy is just dying. He has Orb of Corrosion, minute 10, there's an offlane, minute 11. So it's really a rough game, right? As you can see right here. So all that you can do is push waves with W. You just push wave, push waves. If your opponents show to defend the tower, for example, right now, I'm sure someone will come there. Uh, they're pushing me, right? So I see two people here, draw has to defend if my teammates were a bit better they would be sitting bot with me right coming here with me and killing this row instantly right as you see i just think you know they could come and we kill the draw while the, the while the opponents are showing it right as even if uh even if this wasn't a throw right this was another hero defending the tower let's say aa or tiny or anything like that i would still receive information that they're here right so pa could farm top easily without without getting yanked right as you can see there are two mid, three mid, PA seeing them. She sees uh, draw bottom also, and then Centaur is dead. So it's just 
making space by pushing waves. This is a concept that not a lot of people understand, right? Because if you, someone is defending, if someone is defending a wave, they are not ganking your teammate, right? They're not ganking the safe lane uh, carry. They're not warding. They're just defending a tower, and you obviously have the information of them being there. So it's very, uh, very, very easy to sort of make space like that, just because of the information that they're giving your team. As you can see again, Drow is solo bottom, four hitters are top. If one of my teammates were here, Drow would, was going to die, right? Because she can't really show like this. As you can see, I just uh, got top networks again. I have 113 CS, like 12 minutes in. I'm very, very farmed. But my teammates are doing that great. So, you know, I just try to make space as much as I can. They're obviously smoking right here on the Drow. It's kind of late, right? They shouldn't be there. They should either push lanes or, you know, Simply not try to fight the enemies when they have like no network. They have like not javelin, they have boots or buff corrosion and doing anything with it. Alright, so I still try to shove this way right here, try to bait the opponents, and I think they were going to come towards me. And obviously, the first item of Monkey King, if you're playing mid, should be uh, Maestro. Most of the time, Maestro or Desolator. Maybe even Diffusal sometime, but I would only buy Diffusal against. Um, I would only buy Diffusal against Medusa, which is a pretty good hero in this patch, but uh, yeah, usually you want to go Maelstrom because of the farming speed, right, farm potential that you might get. As you can see, they're ganking right here, throw is dead, two of them are dead, and then Oracle ran away from me, not safe. Uh, I was kind of annoyed here, right, <laughs> uh, he ran, he ran the, like that, instead of sword me. Could have just ulted me right here, very easily. Because I can't run away out of my ultimate. Uh, the bug, the replay bug is right here. But the bug is where my mouse is, right? And I sort of have to go there. Because the Elsa would die. Because I always also wanted to be close to him, right? So she would... I mean, this guy was here, so... Yeah. But whatever, I died for three heroes. Obviously, PA is just farming me while, which is really good for me. I'm still highest net even though I died for three heroes. I just bought a Maestro. So, as I was saying, you kind of want to buy a Maestro because of the farming potential and a lot of damage that you gain from it, right? The magical damage. If you proc with one of those, you hit four opponents for 140 damage, right? So, you proc with two of them, that's like 280. That's like uh, 1,100 damage just by two procs. So, it's super, super... It's a lot. The other thing that you might want to do while playing Monkey King mid, you can buy a Desolator also. And instead of Maelstrom, right? The first item. Because with Desolator, I would want to buy it when you have some other core that has magic. I mean, that has, yeah, magical damage, a lot of magical damage. For example, if you would have something like Leshrac safe lane for any reason, right? In higher MMR, you might have stuff like that. So if you need more physical damage you can buy a desolator it also procs the q right boundless strike so you can hit a lot of people with uh this and decrease you know all of their armor multiple heroes armor and also the ultimate uh procs the minus armor from desolator but the main thing that i mean the main reason why you would want to buy desolator over maelstrom it's only because you're playing against something like an am right and you just want to decrease his armor uh, that was the that would be the only hero that I would buy Desolator over Maelstrom, I believe. Simply because I am uh, a the mage suffers a bit from armor. I mean, from armor reduction, and also Maelstrom doesn't do any damage on him because of the counter spell. So yeah, obviously afterwards you kind of want to buy a BKB or an Agony Scepter. Either one of them would be really good. I choose to go um, Agony Scepter here because I have an Oracle, but usually I might buy the uh, buy the BKB. You kind of just want to farm until you have it next time, right? As you can see, I'm still highest, but my teammates, you know, they're gaining a bit of gold on the opponents. Yeah, this guy, uh, Rage bot back, which is good for us, obviously. We're just continuing to... I'm continuing to farm, right? As you can see, I have 3 to 2, <laughs> but I have a lot of CS, obviously. Which is the important part. High CS, I even farm like 2 or 3 camps of Asians. So this is why, this is where my gold comes from. And it's also pretty hard to fight all opponents. If you look at the win probability, the enemies have like, had like 75, 80%, and now it's just going, 
it's going better towards us. Obviously, since we has her uh, battlefield, so it's going to start farming more. I try not to take her farm, right? So I see her TP bottom. I just point booster by point booster go there, and then uh, yeah, I just try to push more waves. We don't want to fight them yet, right? Because Centaur is extremely, extremely far, as you can see. 2.5, 2.6k HP, Vanguard, so like no physical damage, Hood of Defiance, no magical damage that's gonna like take, can just engage, disengage with Stampede, Sandra also, so state resistance, and a lot of stuff. We, we can't really do any damage to them, to our opponents. Stein is also really strong because of this, plus 22 armor, so yeah, it's really, really hard to fight them. The idea behind Agnim Scepter over BKB as I said, it's because I have an Oracle, but usually you sort of still want to buy X instead of BKB, unless you feel like you really need BKB to get ult off. But uh, I feel like my team could sort of uh, have a little diversion, right? Because of the uh, Pangolier can run with ultimate, or Spirit can run with ultimate, right? So because of that, I feel like I can sort of get my ult off. If the opponents are like, not focusing me if I'm auto if I'm not out of position right so because of that because of that uh, I go for Agonim Scepter first it's simply because as long as you don't die you do a lot more damage than with a BKB even with your ultimate because it's not you're not constricted to one area of the fight right since they're like spawn every four seconds you can just have one every four seconds exactly as I said so yeah it's really good. Also, it gives you a lot more HP, I believe, than the BKB would give you. BKB only gives you 10 strength. This gives you 10 all distributes and then all um, and then 175 HP. So it's a bit more HP, a bit more stats. It's obviously really good. I have the Aghanim Scepter right now, 90 minutes in, and we just got a gold advantage right now. They also got a bit of a bit more gold from this team fight because they just went on me with Tiny and everyone, and I was able to survive. So this is sort of what you want to do. You still want to split push a lot with three tens, because no hero in the game could like possibly chase, right? Besides, you know, storm spirit or anti mage, something like that. But anti mage won't jump on you. No heroes can really uh, just get on top of you. Uh, talents you want to get plus twenty attack speed is really important. The first. Uh, at level 10 so you can farm more and also build more stacks you know jingle mastery is really good for efficiency and then at level 15 you always want to buy you always want to get a plus 450 uh three dance cast range it's really good i know you might say oh there are like the three million and stuff you can get q i mean you can get the first one plus 130 jingle mastery damage but it's simply not worth it right it doubles the damage yes but it can get this spell right and it also has a condition you know, oh, I have to hit four times before I can get it. And if they dispel you, if they halber me with Centaur, if throw, uh, gust me, you know, stuff like that, I might not be able to get a hit off. If I'm obviously under uh, stuns and stuff like that, I won't be able to just get stacks. So instead, I choose to go for the... You always should get the plus 450. It's because you're more mobile, right? As you can see, I have a lot more range at this. I mean, I, I believe it's bugged on the... Uh, showcase right here yeah I can do it more probably so it's a lot right that you can move more on the map and get more farm be more efficient you know gank more do uh, everything more efficiently it's just not one part of the game which would, would be like team fighting right because this only helps the team fighting you're not it doesn't help you in, uh, farming or anything this helps you while ganking the three cast range while ganking while farming while split pushing while scouting gives you a lot more options. At level 20, I always go for the minus 7 second bound, let's try cooldown. I think it's really important, and this is one of the uh, another one of the underrated parts of this hero. This has 20 second cooldown, and it got reduced from 22 to 20 seconds in this uh, patch. So, minus 7 seconds, that's obviously a lot uh, less. It's obviously 13, so... 30 second cooldown on this, it feels really really good. Especially since you also have a uh, crit on it, right? 225%. So it's really really good to get this. How I think about it, it's sort of the feature from Shaker, right? 
it has similar cooldown, especially if you get minus seven seconds. Obviously, you don't block people in their pathing, right? However, it's a big stun, it's a big AoE. And it does a lot of damage also. It does plenty of damage, you know. 225% crit, plus 40% bond style crit is not that much. If you just calculate, let's say I have 200 damage, plus 40%, it's only like plus 80 damage. Minus 7 seconds, it's a lot better. This is one of the crucial moments in the game. Three of my teammates were dead, and I believe the opponents are going rush. So this is sort of how you uh, need to fight that rush when you're playing Monkey Kicking. You just have to uh, get it rolled up, right? That guy just rolls in. I have vision of, I had vision of the rush. I dropped the bottle, obviously. There's an Aegis on the ground. I ping it, and like, the opponents can't really do anything. They're just out of position. If they, even if they took the Aegis, I'm pretty sure we still would have won this team fight very easily because they all died. Still, and this guy has the Aegis, so it would have been exactly the same thing. You can't really get. Uh, you can't really go rush against the monkey king. It's super, super hard to do it. That's another reason why I like this hero. It's very easy to contest the rush run. And the opponents to get rush, you need to be like that, right? And have no, no potential, uh, no potential combo with rush run. In this moment of the game, the game got extremely hard for the opponents, I believe, since Centaur is the most farming hero of the opponents, and he has. Like 5 armor. This is one of the issues with uh, Centaur. He doesn't have a lot of armor and nobody seems to be buying armor on it. And that's an issue. It's obviously really bad if you don't have any armor. Especially against PA Monkey King. We do a lot of damage. This guy just finished the BKB right now. 24 minutes in BKB. It's okay. He's kind of under farmed, right? And um, I'm pretty farmed this game. I have a BKB right now. They have no way of killing me or PA, I believe. PA has a lot of evasion and a BKB and I have a BKB. And uh, also when I ult, I get 24 bonus armor. So there's like no way they're sort of killing us afterwards, after this moment. How... This is one of the interesting parts about Monkey King, right? How you should team fight. Exactly as I'm doing right now. Right? I'm just sitting in the trees and then dropping an ult off and coming out. As you can see, I'm just... Uh, I cancel my ult a lot. Right? Then I just go here, get the two man stun. And then I drop the ult. Right. If you can't get a perfect ult, just get a stun off and then ult. Since the opponents are like forced to run away from you anyway, right? Either ultimate or X is gonna do a lot of damage for them. So because of this, it's uh, really good to control how the team fight is played by the enemies, right? They just have to disengage. Whenever I show, draw has to uh, shoot him back out. So yeah. Afterwards, after these three items which you would normally want on Monkey King would be something like a Scott, right? So you combine that with the Aghanim Scepter. The Aghanim Scepter is going to slow everyone in the team fight very, very easily. And any uh, prolonged team fight is going to be very easy for you to take because the opponent will all be slow, they won't heal as much, they won't attack as fast. It's going to be very difficult to fight, especially in your ultimate and with level 25. But it's going to be able to get away uh, from your ultimate and they're going to do a lot of damage. More damage, right? Because you're also slowing the opponents so they get out, um, you know, in a longer time. So, yeah, this is sort of what you want to do with Monkey King. Another potential item is going to be Glaipnir, Glaipnir, however you call it. The upgraded of the mace, right? It's kind of costly. I believe it costs like 3.5 thousand gold more than the Mjolnir. I mean, the Maestro, so. You don't want to buy it until it's like the uh, latest portions of the game. I would always choose to upgrade uh, Glaipnir from Maelstrom if I don't need more attack speed, right? So usually I would go for that one because it's you can root them and then ult on top of or ult on top and then root all of them, right? So you just hit a lot with Wukong's command with your ultimate. So it's really good because of that. Maelstrom, I mean the Mjolnir upgrade, I would only buy that against PL or as I said whenever I need the uh, more attack speed but usually usually you could just hold it like this right Maelstrom until super late in the game and then try to decide other items as I said for this hero would be Skadi which is I'm buying which is exactly what I'm buying right now 
a beast ability is also really good if you want to focus some people down right you could just uh jump on them press the beast ability, then press your stun right so you have two disables and also you kind of need to control people in bkb so they don't just run away of your ultimate so a beast ability is really good because of that uh, as, as you can see i'm drawing a map my teammates are playing though for no reason we already got a we already got our uh, Rex right there, so there's no need for them to be there anymore. But it's okay, you know. We need to take these two towers, then a Rex is the order of the game. Monkey King Bar is also a decent item on this hero, especially because you can proc it, right? From Ultimate or Reganim Scepter, you can proc the Monkey King. So you do a lot, a lot of damage because of it. But you usually just want to buy it against the Evasion heroes. Windrunner or someone that has Halbert or you know, bottom fly, stuff like that. You don't just want to buy it randomly. Okay, look at the other items. Uh, Satanic, SNY, they're also decent items, right? SNY because you don't want to get stunned for so long. And a Satanic, so you can man up on people a lot easier. It's pretty easy to man up on people already, but Satanic just gives you a lot, a lot. A lot more, right? A lot more lifesteal combining with Jingo's Mastery. It's just a lot of damage. Opponents are just forced to run away from you, the later stages of the game. You can easily just um, you can easily just kill them, right? And you do so much damage even because of your egg scepter. Uh, they can't really even do what they're doing right now, right? They still take some damage because of the agony scepter. Uh, I was healing there, I was okay. Oracle killed me with uh, a <laughs> with this spell. Yeah, I, I got a bit tilted here, I'm not gonna lie. He killed me, I was okay there. I had stun in like two seconds. And I was gonna be okay. But it's no problem, you know. The game is uh, close to over. So this is sort of what you wanna do with Monkey King. Team fights are kinda easy, because, you know, it's just ult and people run away from you. Item should be sort of what I'm doing right now. And then Scotty, and then possibly a Beast of Blade, and then upgrade the Maelstrom. And early game try to do as try to copy as much as I did, right? Just farm the camps close to you. As you saw, all the three opponents had the great lanes. They were all doing great, but then I, st I was still ahead of all of them. They were still first in that world. So it's kind of easy because of that to win games. Because you can put a pace on the enemies, right? Imagine how the game would look if my teammates won their lanes, right? I'm still winning this game relatively easy. I'm still highest now third by a lot. I'm still owning the game, but imagine if my uh, teammates were doing decent in their lanes instead of just losing them horribly. It would look so much different, right? This game would be over like 10 minutes ago, maybe even more, simply because you can gain a lot of gold that the opponents don't have access to, because you just move faster than them with three dance. So it's super, super easy to win like that, right? Obviously, now you just try to rush and end the game. This item, uh, Orbot Destruction, is actually really good for Monkey King. It's just like Aghanim Scepter, right? I mean, just like the anything that works with Aghanim Scepter or your ultimate. You slow people down, especially when you have uh, Ayo Skadi also. They're like uh, slow to 100 movement speed and a lot on their attack speed. They also decrease armor, so it's very hard for them to fight you. As you can see, I'm 3.4 thousand HP 31 minutes in. So there's no way that I'm dying, especially because I have a beekeeper, right? So no magic damage works versus me. I have 32 armor also, 65% magic, I mean 65% damage reduction, physical damage reduction, with, without my ultimate being dropped. So it's it's a lot. The opponents can't really do anything, to be honest. Game is sort of over right now, unless we throw very horribly, which we won. Right, thank you for watching the video, guys. If you have any, uh, suggestions leave them below in the comments have a nice day